Hey, what's up, guys? Jason here from Poor Man's Preparing. In this video, we're going to check out my ultimate survival kit, or at least the best I could do. Alright, the pack I use to put together my ultimate survival kit is the Survivor Filter Tactical Hydration Pack. Of all the bags I've had, this one's definitely my favorite, so it was easily the one I wanted to use for this kit. Now I took apart some other kits that I had and, and modified them a little bit and things like that to put this kit together because I don't have a lot of gear. So I reused it and I put together this ultimate kit. Or, or what I like to say is it's the best kit I could make but we'll go over the items on the outside first and then we'll move the bag off to the side and I'll go over the items that are on the inside first item I want to talk about is the med kit now I put my med kit right on the front of my bag using these VanQuest Molly straps work very good this allows me to just put this in with any kit that I need to in my everyday carry or attach it on here so it's uh, easily accessible now I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see what's in here but it's basically the same exact kit as my everyday carry medical kit in addition to a go zero solar flashlight it's not the brightest light but it's pretty good for when you need the next item on the outside of my pack is a Kenwood two-way radio I'm not sure of the brand or anything but these work good I have two of these, so I'll give one to, for example, to my neighbor or a family member or something, so I can keep in contact with them. Copy that. All right, the next item on the outside of the pack is this Trapper's Axe, which came in the December box from Apaka Box. Very cool, very lightweight. Um, I haven't got to test it out a whole lot, but it seems very reliable, so I instantly threw it on here. But it's a pretty cool little axe, and uh, I'm sure I'll make a video on it in the future. A good little axe is always a must. Alright, the next item up on the outside of my bag is a little sleeping bag from BattleBox. It's not the greatest, but it doesn't get super cold uh, very long where I live in Kentucky. So this will do just fine, I believe, in, in conjunction with a wool blanket or something. But this is just right on top. I have it held on right here. It's just two little carabiners. They're not for climbing or anything. Just for holding gear on there. The good thing about um, not adding this to the inside of the pack is obviously it doesn't take up the space. Plus with these clips here I can just remove it real easy to access this back part or I could just flip it over because it's not really in the way. Alright, the next item I have attached to the outside of my pack is a Mr. Beam's rechargeable lantern. These are very good lanterns. I made a video on them. I can leave a link in the description. But basically I have this attached with a bungee cord and these two little D-ring locks here. Work very good. Comes off real easy. What's really cool about these lanterns is they will charge up your mobile devices as well. Flashlights, anything like that that charges via USB, you can charge it up with this. Very cool light. Alright, and the last item I have attached to the outside of the pack is my Topps Cub knife. Very good blade. Got it from Battle Box. Very nice. Got a divot to help you uh, with a bow drill. And I also put a sharpening stone down in this little pouch here. Very good knife and I keep it on the outside to have it um, quickly accessible. But that's all the items on the outside of my pack. Now we'll I'll lay this to the side and um, unpack all the items and go over them with you. Hopefully I have enough room on my table here for everything that's in it. But let's open it up and get started. Alright, here are all of my lighting options. Of course you've seen the Mr. Beam's lantern. Um, I also have a charging cable for it as well. Similar to that is this hybrid light lantern. It's solar, expandable, and does a pretty good job. It also could be a flashlight like this and you can hang it up like that. Both of these lanterns can recharge items. This one is solar so that's pretty cool. 
I have my Lumen Top TD16 flashlight right here. It's a very bright 900 lumen flashlight with several modes. Also have two rechargeable batteries to go with it. I have a short review on this light I'll leave in the description. There's the Go Zero solar light for low light situations. And lastly, a LED headlamp. With all these items here, my lighting situation is definitely covered. All right, you see the BattleBox 10 I had mounted on the outside. Along with it, I have a BattleBox tarp that's 12 feet by nine and a half feet. Also have a inflatable pillow made by Climate. And a three quarter length sleeping pad also made by Climate. These are very cool, they're inflatable. They take up minimal space and you know, a couple breaths of air and you can be resting nicely. Along with the tarp, I have these little cord grip things. You just wrap the cord around there. It makes it, I can't ever remember the name of everything, but these make it super easy to uh, like tighten or loosen and take, a, take down and put up your tarps or whatever. So very cool item. These little D-ring clips I had holding on my Mr. Beam's lantern. These are also very useful for shelter building as well. And to go with the tarp, these are tarp clips, which I'm sure you've seen a lot of these items in my bushcraft kit but like I said I took everything apart to make this kit here I have a schmog always something good you can use it for cover you know use it as a little blanket if you need to and of course I have a bunch of paracord there's a hundred feet here I don't know probably 30 feet here can never have too much cord <clears throat> and the last two items I have a a thick uh, contractor style trash bag and a mylar blanket as well. These are very good for setting up an impromptu shelter when you just don't have the time or energy to set up all this. Alright here's my little cook setup here. Um, I would like to add a pocket stove with some fuel but until then I will use this little uh, penny stove I made. Works very good you can just set stuff right on top of it and it'll get the boil going. The, the, this is an enamel cup. It came from a pocket box. Good for boiling water, making soup, whatever you need to do on the trail. Got a nice little handle. And same thing with this one, but it's stainless steel. Holds a little bit more. Alright, and in here I have some food. In here I have different seasonings. Salt, pepper, ketchup, hot sauce, sugars, drink mixes, and all that good stuff. So always good to have. have a couple packs of ramen noodles. Love them, love them, love them. Can't say enough good about them. I have a couple of these Wise Company uh, dehydrated meals. You just add some water. There's like four or five servings in each. So if you if you have a group of people, this is definitely something you want to invest in. There's all kinds of different flavors, so you can get what you like. I have a couple of things of oatmeal. Oatmeal is always good. Next up, I have four little Nutri-Grain bars. They'll probably get a little smashed up, but it don't matter. But, and lastly, I have this little can opener that came from a pocket box. Works very well, very solid. And, of course, a eating utensil with a fork, spoon, and knife. And it also has a can opener on it as well. Can opener, bottle opener. So I have everything there I need to last a few days. Uh, water is life, so it's very important. And you want something you can trust and rely on. And I've used Survivor Filter to drink straight out of the Ohio River. I used this one and their straw model. They both work great. So I know I could rely on it. So it was no question to throw it in my bag. In this bag, I have a collapsible canteen, also made by Set uh, Survivor Filter. This holds quite a bit. I'm not sure the exact amount. I can't never remember everything. I wish I could. Then they have an Ultra Pre Filter. I have a, a couple gallon size baggie here, just in case. And of course, there's the hoses for the Survivor Filter Pro. Um, if you haven't seen Survivor Filter, I definitely recommend checking them out. And of course, you can save 15% by using the code PMP, which I will leave a link 
to do so in the description. Alright, next up is my fire supplies. Right up here on top I have a candle, UST candle. Right here I have a Smith's Tinder box, which I made a review on this. I'll leave in the description so you can check it out. And I put together a whole new fire kit, which I'll open it up and show you what's in it. Alright, here's my fire kit I put together especially for this bag. Right here I got the Exotac, um, I can't remember the name of it, Nano Striker or something. Very good ferro rod. I have a big old lighter here. It's not a big, but it is very reliable. I've had this thing for years. I don't even know where it came from. And it's still like full of fluid. It works every strike. Very good lighter. Next up I have a magnifying glass and a lens cleaning wipe to keep it clean of course. Something a lot of people could overlook very easy. Gotta keep them lenses clean. To go along with that is basically this magic punky dust that came from a pocket box which is uh, pretty much rotten wood that's been processed down to a powder. Very good stuff. I have a tea light candle. Live fire, emergency fire starter, excellent stuff. In this little tin, I have a few quick tender tabs. They look a little dirty, it's all right. And I have six uh, fire assist. These are magnesium powder capsules. I have a video of them. I'll put a link in the description as well. Very good stuff. There's a big chunk of fat wood with some micro cord wrapped around it. Here I have a wet fire. Very good stuff. Right here all bundled together. This is the inside of fire cord. I just cut it up and put it on there. Some regular waterproof matches and a striker. And a little baggie of Instafire fire starter. I have six pieces of jute rope in there. Very good stuff. Here I have eight Yuko stormproof matches. These things burn underwater. Every kit needs these. A little bundle of some more fat wood. Can never have too much of that. This is the striker for my Yuko matches. And a square of aluminum foil in case the ground is wet. You can always lay this down and get a fire going on it. Alright, next up is fishing stuff. Now I have a, a small little fillet knife right here. A Berkley, pretty good brand. I didn't want to put a full size one in there and I had this one. I was like, yeah, that's perfect. So I threw it in. Right here I have a, a six foot by two foot gill net. It was just great for, you know, putting on a stream or creek, catching up uh, quite a few fish. I have a whole spool of 10 pound test line because I just, you'll need a lot. Right here I have two bell alerts. They work very good, and uh, these are actually a multi-use item in conjunction with the fishing line. You can use it to set up a perimeter defense. And then when someone hits that line, there's no bells in nature, so you'll be able to hear that sound real easy. And then I put together a pretty cool fishing kit. We'll open it up and check it out now. Alright, I had this little box made by Plano, so I went ahead and used it as a fishing kit. Inside I have, there's some larger sinkers for catfish, some medium and small fish, or some medium and small sinkers for uh, smaller fish like crappie and bass and things like that. I have a little rooster tail like bait here, along with some beetle spins, which what you do here is you attach a two bait and jig head on there, and every fish, I've caught every kind of fish using that kind of bait. From bluegill to crappie to bass to catfish, you know, you'll catch everything using those. I have some extra jig heads. Here's a couple, there's like four or five medium sized hooks in here. Right here I have some uh, snap swivels. What these do is you can tie them on the end of your line and it makes changing your hook or your bait um, really easy. You don't have to cut your line and retie it. And right here I have some larger of the same snap swivels. And then I have a few of these right here which are just regular swivels which um, you, you can tie these on your line and it will prevent them from twisting up. Alright, now 
on the other side. On the other side, I have a couple bobbers right here. This one wouldn't really fit, so I went ahead and cut it down to make it fit in my container. Works very nice, still floats. Here I have some treble hooks, which are three-sided hooks. These are great for catfishing. And some larger hooks as well. And over here I have plenty of different colors of tube baits. These slide on the jig heads. You can use them on the beetle spin or you can use them independently. You gotta have different colors because some days fish want one color, some days they want another color. A lot of that depends on the color of the water, how muddy it is, the time of the year, and different things like that. And lastly, something every fishing kit needs is a pair of nail clippers to uh, clip your line. Makes it a lot easier. But that is my fishing kit. It's got everything in it that I need to catch fish. What's, what's really important about fish is they're, they're a high source of protein. They can give you a lot of energy. You know, they're relatively easy to, to catch, to clean, and to cook. So, I mean, you definitely want to keep, you definitely want to have the ability to catch fish in your survival kit. All right, next up is something a lot of people probably overlook, and that is hygiene. When, you know, when, when something bad is going on, I know the last thing you're thinking about is, all right, I need to uh, brush my teeth or put some deodorant on, but over a long term, it is very, very important. So I keep a pair of nail clippers. Make sure they're sharp, good quality ones. You don't want ones that will just snap your nails. You want them to actually cut. Plus, that has many other uses, like you saw in my fishing kit. I keep a pair in there as well. And inside of here, I have a bandana which would act like a wash rag. Then in here I have a travel size toothbrush, deodorant, and toothpaste along with some folded up toilet paper right here. And there's a, a body size wet wipe pretty much called Epic Wipes. And I took and vacuum sealed it all together to make it nice and small and compact. Now, hygiene probably isn't something that's necessary for like a 24-hour pack or get-home bag, but uh, when you want to want a long-term survival kit, uh, you definitely want to include hygiene. So don't overlook that step. All right, here are some additional items I threw in my kit. The first thing you see down here is these bright orange um, pieces of fabric. They are from a poncho, and I will be using these for signaling. You know, you can just spread them out, hang them from a tree, cut them into strips, whatever you need to do. The, the bright orange color is contrast pretty much any environment. I mean, hunters wear it for a reason. So no matter where you're at, this would definitely stick out and help someone see you. Right here I have some playing cards, um, you know, because you just, you're going to get bored. You're going to have nothing to do. So in playing cards, you have literally thousands of games you can play with these. So it's always good to have. If you have kids and stuff like that, you want to throw in coloring books and maybe crossword puzzles, things like that, different books. You have a notepad, which is good for remembering stuff, and of course you can always use it to play stuff like tic-tac-toe. Here I have a regular pencil, a mechanical pencil, just a cheap Bic ink pen, and a Sharpie permanent marker. Also with that I have a pencil sharpener. This is a multi-use item because you can also use it to uh, make shavings from wood to help get a fire going. Then over here I have a, a household needle repair set and a couple spools of thread. Um, you never know when you need to fix something. You know you're not going to be, you're not going to have a whole wardrobe full of clothing with you so you might need to repair what you have on. And that's good for that. It, it ain't got to be pretty as long as it works. And, of course, you got to have knowledge. Um, you can't, you just can't remember everything. You can't. You can try, but you won't, I promise you. So, having a good book full of great information is ideal. You might even want to start packing your kit with a book because it's very, very valuable to your survival. Like I said, you can't remember everything. One item I did overlook is a roll of electrical tape. I mean, this stuff has thousands of uses, so always have a roll of tape in your pack. You'll never know when you need it. All right, next up is 
an area I really need to work on. It's uh, communication and navigation. You know, navigation goes hand-in-hand -hand with communication because it helps you know where you're at, know where your group's at, know where you're going, all that good stuff. I just have a compass off of a VSL, VSSL Supplies. It is a very good compass, but I would like a more professional one. And I have a, a highway map from, for Kentucky uh, from last year. Uh, I would like to get a new one, but of course it does show all the other little details as well, not just highways. So it'll do, but of course I always want to improve. Some additions I'd like to make to this particular area of my kit is like a GPS unit or a t take this two-way radio out and replace it with a ham radio, which you need a license for. And finally, what you all probably really want to see is my knives, tools, things like that. Of course, you already saw the uh, the Russian Trapper axe. Very cool axe. Can't wait to fully test that out. That, uh, it's really I'm really excited about that. Of course, I have my Moore knife, bushcraft knife, right here. Right here, I have a Schrade uh, pry bar that's wrapped with paracord. Very useful tool here. Everybody needs a pry bar, whether just at home or in your emergency bags. Here we have the Wicked folding saw. Very good saw here. Compact, lightweight. Uh, does a real good job of cutting and of course so you already saw this my tops cub knife here and lastly I threw in this saberback bowie made by uh, Outdoor Edge very good knife here I mean, with, all, with all these tools I have the capabilities of doing pretty much anything I want from building shelter batoning wood you know making a fire you know I'm covered all, with, all the way around Alright guys, so there you see all the items in my kit. And now the fun part begins of trying to put everything back in there the way it was. Should be an awesome job. One item I did forget to mention is this little sack right here. It's a drawstring. Um, this I put this in there in case I find any useful items while out and about or whatever. I could throw them in here and keep them. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with this kit. I have the abilities to do everything, collect water, cook and boil water, have all the tools I need to get jobs done. Have a minor first aid kit, so if something bad happens I can control bleeding. Uh, plenty of cordage and shelter to live pretty comfortably. Navigation, communication, lighting, um, food gathering, mainly fish. Um, repair with sewing, signaling, uh, a little bit of entertainment, and, and of course the book for the knowledge. And you can't forget hygiene. So overall, I'm really satisfied with this kit. Like I said, it's well put together. It has everything I need in it, um, including the food. Can't forget about that. Probably would go ahead and add some jerky to my food kit. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with this kit, and it'll probably stay this way for a long time. And if need be, I can add additional pouches using some molly strapping. But let me know what you think about my Ultimate Survival Kit in the comments below. And if you're interested in any items or video reviews I've done, I will try my best to leave those links in the description. Alright, I got my bag repacked here. And as you can see, there's still some room left. Because I was able to make it better organized. So, I have some items here that I am going to add to it have a knife to go in this top pocket all this little stuff here scissors an extra whistle some chapstick some matches an extra ferro rod some hand sanitizer and some uh, headache medicine acetamophene however you say it and these little wire ties They'll all go in this bag and be folded up in the top pocket here. Along with that, I have another water filter, an AccuSharp knife sharpener, some large black wire ties. The black ones are more resistant to the sun and better to have. Some more water storage, and this small game, aka rat trap, to catch some small game. But those are just a few things I had extra room for. I could even add a couple more items if I really needed to. 
which I might over time. But I just wanted to show you that before the video ended. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to give it a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more. And remember, be ready.